Hi, this is Maxim Verbis. Spirituality is basically the capacity to reunify our soul. But as there are seven types of souls, there are also seven types of spirituality, and the tarot will help us to understand this. As ever, we will start this class with a small visualization. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And let your imagination render a picture of the divine. What is the divine for you? Is it a person? Like a god? Is it an abstract principle? Is it a virtue? Who embodied that virtue? Is it outside of you or inside or both? Are you part of the divine? Or do you feel completely disconnected? What is your representation of the whole? And how do you feel connected to it? How do you communicate with it? Do you pray? Does it know exactly how do you feel? Do you need to go in a church, in nature? Take some time to let your imagination create a vision of the divine and you may take some notes about it and pause the video. The structure of the tarot is a very good illustration on how messy the soul is because fundamentally we are divided in three very distinct manners to conceive the meaning of our life. The lower soul will reflect how we conceive our selfish dreams of unlimited power on life. Then the middle soul will reflect our moral imagination, how we conceive to be a good person. Then we have the upper soul, which will help us to imagine a meaning of life related to the entire community. What will make a good community? And as we have those three layers, we are constantly torn in one side or to the other. And that's what creates such a messiness in our soul. Because one of the seven in every layer will be continuously creating a meaning of life and we will go in one side or to the other side and that's very complicated. It is only when we have realized how messy the soul is, how reversible is every idea of the meaning of life, how a virtue can turn into a vice and sometimes a vice into a virtue. It is only at that moment that we really feel ready to assume a personal spirituality. And spirituality has nothing to do with a religion. We may use some religion tradition to do it, but basically spirituality is the necessity to reunify our soul into oneness instead of being divided in three parts. And the tarot will just show us how to reunify and how we are all different in the way to reunify because there are seven types of soul orientation, therefore there are seven types of spirituality. In our previous video on destiny, 
we have seen how the will can express as the desire to cheat people, the desire to safeguard, and the necessity to challenge authorities. In all the cases, those ordinary will are about keeping an inner plan and facing any obstacle and overcoming them. That is the ordinary will. But there is also something such as a spiritual will. And to get a glimpse of what it is about, the best example is the biblical prophet Moses. Moses was a broken man when he arrived in the house of Jethro. He had just murdered an Egyptian and he was a he was a runaway from that murder. When he encountered the burning bush and the Lord spoke to him, he discovered what was his destiny. And obviously, at first, as every good prophet does, he refused. But eventually, he decided to take up his role and change the face of humanity forever. Such is the power of the spiritual will. If you have a destiny with will, the way to conceive spirituality is to contemplate the pure destructivity of the burning bush. And for people who have no destiny with will, that is too scary. But the closest we can stand from that type of spirituality is the understanding of the power of forgiveness. Because as the burning bush, forgive, forgiving someone is activating the power to consume and not to destroy. That's one of the mystery of the will at a spiritual level. In our video about the destiny, we found that the second line is related to the element wisdom. There is first the desire to acqu acquire knowledge, then the desire to explore the world, and then to reorganize the society. In any cases, this type of meaning is found when we can fit the element with the whole and to have a global picture. But there is also a spiritual side of wisdom. And to understand it, we have to go back in one of the life-changing events that occur to the person we know are they called the Buddha, but at that time was a prince called Siddhartha Gautama. Siddhartha has been raised in the highest levels of luxury one can imagine, and everything about around him was just pure bliss and enjoyment because his father decided to create around him a golden cage. And his destiny completely changed the moment he discovered those things we called disease, decay and death. At that moment, everything he owns feel rubbish for him because he discovered the pure suffering, the key element with a destiny of wisdom is the connection with the universal pain. And this is the life-changing event. For those who have a soul who do not respond really to wisdom, the closest we can get from that type of spirituality is to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is 
at the spiritual level much more than being happy for receiving what we have. It's an unconditional stance to take everything that is brought to us as a bliss, even if it hurts. The third column is related to intelligence. And when you have a destiny of intelligence, you will particularly react to the intelligence of communication, intelligence of entrepreneurship, and in the intelligence of understanding the laws of nature. But there is one level which can be considered as a truly spiritual intelligence, and it is what Einstein used to call understanding the mind of God. And it is unclear what God is referring about. But his theory of relativity was built upon an intuition. The moment he decided to imagine how it may feel to mount over a ray of light, he became part of the universe. And he managed to crack one of the deepest mysteries of the 20th century, the deep interconnection between time and space. And obviously, those kind of visceral experience of the mind of God is not accessible to anyone. But as we are all part of nature, the glimpse of experience we can get, whenever we are in tune with our own nature, we are in tune with the whole nature. And it is what Hindus call Dharma. It is an action which is in complete adequation with nature around. And that is the closest we can get from God's mind. The fourth column is related to harmony and it is highly paradoxical. We start with the harmony through waging war in the interpersonal. Then we discover the harmony of self-control. Then we discover the harmony of the opposite force that creates the whole drama of existence. In all the cases, the harmony is a little bit like mayonnaise, is the capacity to blend two substances who are not supposed to blend together and still being at poise. But there is also a spiritual element of harmony. And the best guide we can find through that type is probably the Italian poet Dante's, who invites us to an exploration of the human soul through hell, purgatory and paradise to discover the many facets of human destiny and to learn through the encounter. Because when the spiritual dimension of your life is harmony, it is the contact with people, good and bad, that we will create your sense of spirituality. And we have a name for that. We used to call it humanity, but it's, it has nothing to do with being very educated in the classical author. It is the deep cultivation of interpersonal contact and understanding of the differences. And obviously, having such a depth of understanding is not accessible to anyone. But whenever we come in contact with someone and we discover that beyond their vice and quality, their life is as meaningful as all life, then we discover how life-changing the relationship could be. And it's exactly the type of strange and paradoxical spirituality we find with a destiny of harmony. 
The fifth column is related to the dimension we have called science. And we start with the conformity to the norms, then to the capacity to observe nature, and then the collective decisions of new norms as scientific understanding. And in the three levels, the dimension of science is about creating the adequate mental structure that will allow us to get a precise result. But there is also a spiritual element of science. And the best example we can find, it is the dramatic conversion of what we call St. Paul, but it was at that time Paul of Tars. And he was on his way persecuting Christians till he got struck by the light of God. And he got blinded for a while till he integrated the message and his destiny that was about creating the first rendering of Christian theology. What does it mean to be Christian in the daily life and to establish the universality of the Christian message? And obviously, those kinds of experience of light is not accessible to any one of us. But any time we get an understanding on how nature functions, we get a small glimpse of that light. And it is already a spiritual experience that motivates all investigators. But it's accessible to anyone. The sixth column of the Tarot is related to that dimension we have called devotion. So devotion starts with an attention-seeking form of devotion. Then it goes to a professional commitment. It evolves further into a sense of idealism. And in any cases, those ordinary devotion are about an emotional investment of something that is much more in the important than the rest. But devotion has also a spiritual side. And the best example we can see of that devotion could be found probably in the life of the Persian poet Rumi. And Rumi has encountered his master and became his beloved disciple till the moment that master disappeared mysteriously. And that experience led Rumi in a state that St. John of the Cross called the dark night of the soul, a state of total despair, but also allows him to find its way and to create one of the best Sufi poetry that inspires people all around the globe. So obviously such level of intensity is just accessible if you have a destiny with devotion. But for other people, we can get a glimpse of it whenever we feel in love. Because beyond the hormonal and sexual drive, being in love has a dimension of spirituality. And it is usually the closest we can get from devotion when we don't have such type of soul. The seventh column is related to the dimension we call order. So with such a destiny, we will expose to the order as social status, then to the order at, as a moral sense of excellency in behavior, then to the capacity to organize social events. In, in any cases, order is about having a mental pattern 
that will help to restructure the external world. But order has also a spiritual di dimension. And to understand how it can be life-changing, the best example we have is the Mahatma Gandhi. At first, he was just a lawyer walking in South Africa. And he was traveling in a train with a ticket in first class. And a passenger complained about it and he got expelled from the, the train because there were racial laws. And at that very moment, Gandhi discovered how unfair the world was. And obviously, he was personally humiliated. But it was much more than that. It was the entire system that needed to be reorganized. And he did it in a way that fostered mutual respect. And nowadays, he still respects in Britain, even if he's one of the main architects of the Indian independence. That is the true power of order. And that dimension is not accessible when we don't have such type of destiny. But whenever we can expose ourselves into a ritual, into a liturgy, into when we can be touched by the magical setting of a spiritual activity, we can get a small glimpse of what order is about in its spiritual dimension. Now we have covered those seven fundamental ways to connect spiritually. And we all have those seven dimensions. But probably one of them will be our way to access to spirituality. And if you follow a religion, you may find those seven ways within your own religion. Because they have been created to fit to any type of consciousness. If you don't have religion, Take time to find and identify one way to cultivate that spiritual state. Maybe it will require you to spend some time with one or the other religious tradition. But what really matters is to find the way to reunite your soul. Because spirituality is just that. And the tarot can help us to navigate in the maze of the various spirituality to find the approach that will fulfill our soul and achieve the highest purpose of our destiny.